The great proletarian cultural revolution fully released the revolutionary enthusiasm of the people of Huixian County. They have been carrying on a great battle against nature in their march along the road of socialism. They threw themselves like a mighty army into the thick of battle, and they have done well. The emergence of a socialist mountain region is not a gift of heaven or of man. It doesn't come about by sitting back and waiting, either. It comes about only by following Chairman Mao's revolutionary line, by responding to his call in agriculture, learn from Da Chai, and by putting in a lot of hard, earnest work. Poverty and backwardness make the people want to change things. To make revolutions, that is, to turn barren hills into fertile fields, and to control rampaging streams, to paint the freshest and the most beautiful pictures on China's landscape. Huixian County, Hunan Province, is located in the southeastern part of the Taihang Mountains. Barren hills made up 70% of its territory. Only a thin layer of topsoil covered them while drought and disaster occurred nine years out of ten. Three things were particularly difficult. Getting water, moving about, and making a living. For years, the people here had been anxious to overcome the backwardness of their agricultural production. In the great proletarian cultural revolution, they denounced the revisionist line which had hampered the work of the county. They were convinced that since Hui Xian and Da Zhai were both in the Taihang Mountains, and had similar natural conditions, Hui Shen could do what Da Zhai had done. They made up their minds to follow the example of Da Zhai, national pace setter in agriculture, and go all out in reshaping the countryside. The movement to criticize Lin Biao and Confucius gave them added impetus. Their hatred for Lin Biao and Confucius was turned into strength, strength to build socialism. Don't believe in faith, but in revolution. Denouncing the Confucian theory that everything is decided by heaven, they began the battle to transform their land and soil. The region is rocky and poor. Arable land was scarce. Commune members and cadres of Huangshui commune, learning from the revolutionary spirit of Da Zhai, drew up plans to build new fields on the bank of this river. Class enemies made slurring remarks, saying that one can't go against fate, that it's just a waste of time and effort, and that if a riverbed can be turned into cropland, pigs can pull a plow, and rocks will turn into mud. The people of Huangshui Commune refuted them with this battle cry. In building cropland for the revolution, we aren't afraid of any hardship. We'll use the rocks here and bring soil in from Nanshan. To control flooding, they cut up rocks and used them to build dams. Building topsoil was much harder, for the land was 99% rock, only 1% earth. But this land had been won through the blood and tears of our revolutionary forerunners. In the battle for New China, they fought a life and death struggle against the enemy for every inch of it. So now, the people were determined to struggle the same way for every inch of land to change the countryside completely, 
speed up their advance towards socialism and promote agriculture in a big way. Scrape every bit of earth from between the rocks. Scattered little bits, piled together, make a big heap. With human will and effort, man can shape his own destiny. Day after day, they brought in earth by hand cart or shoulder pole, trudging long distances, climbing high hills, sweating all over even if it's freezing cold. Every day, they walked over 50 kilometers. Many hills were moved in these small carts to build soil for bountiful harvest. To make a short cut, they dug this tunnel 180 meters long so that earth from the hilltops could be moved to the riverbed without circling the hill. A winter's hard work turned this dried up riverbed into rich, fertile fields. That's how they answered the attacks of the class enemies with ironclad facts. Since the start of the great proletarian cultural revolution, the people of Huixin County have improved 10,700 hectares of land and built 1,700 hectares of new fields by enriching the topsoil building bigger plots, and leveling the fields. This place is called Hongzhou Cheng, a stony dry riverbed that covers more than 6,600 hectares. There's not a single tree, a square inch of arable land, or a single inhabitant here, only a vast expanse of rocks. People from Liangsun Commune are pitching camp here. They take this site for a battleground. The people of Huixian County criticize Lin Biao and Confucius with revolutionary zeal. This deep going, popular, and sustained movement has greatly heightened their revolutionary enthusiasm. County Party Secretary Zheng Yonghe follows Chairman Mao's teaching to read and study seriously and have a good grasp of Marxism. He wants to remote his thinking in the course of changing Huixian. He is determined to grasp major issues and lead the people in an all-out effort. In the battle to transform Hongzhou Cheng, there was a sharp struggle between the two classes and the two lines. The issue was whether to advance or retreat, to make progress or hold it back. Some rascals allege that when this ancient riverbed changes, donkeys will grow horns. The class enemies were resorting to this modern form of the Confucian fallacy that man must bow to fate in an attempt to stop the onward march of revolution. The people of Huixian replied, 
down with the Confucian fallacy of faith. On with the Battle of Hongzhou Tung. Pigs may blunt, spades may break, but never will we waver in our firm resolve to build socialism. The hardest boulder can only sharpen the revolutionary spirit of the people. Yonghe knows that it is much better to lead by deeds than by words. In the last five years, he has averaged 110 workdays a year doing collective labor. The correct line is the key to success. The masses are the heroes, but cadres must take the lead. Learning from Dajai means hard work. Taking it easy is not the way. young woman is Li Ling Yan, a school graduate who came to live and work in a Taihang mountain village. She handles explosives. members say they will do a major surgical operation on Hongzhou Cheng. They dig five to six meters into the ground, remove the big boulders, and use them to build dams and embankments. They spread the smaller stones on the bottom and cover them with earth brought in from all round. It is a strenuous, thoroughgoing operation. endeavor to transform the landscape. They were determined to follow the example of the foolish old man in the ancient Chinese fables who kept digging at the mountains before his house until they were removed. Like the foolish old man, this old mason Guo Fu Li has brought his children to join the battle of Hongzhou Chen. The whole family was given a citation. boundless happiness to struggle with heaven, with earth, and with men. In hard struggles, the people here find joy and glory. Yonghe is with the people heart and soul. He knows that if a cadder doesn't take part in productive labor, he will become divorced from the masses and turn revisionist sooner or later. Success in building socialism requires the concerted efforts of both cadders and the masses. Facts speak louder than words. This age-old riverbed can be transformed. Zhou Cheng lay dormant for centuries. It has been brought to life by human energy and drive. 
Look, 100 hectares of fertile beans. It's only the beginning. On it rise the first new housing. On it are planted the first saplings. This new Sotus village has even acquired a new name, Xinliang village. This is what the people of Huixian have created. Young people like Li Lingyan are more energetic and vigorous than ever, thanks to the education they received from the former poor and lower middle peasants and to the tempering they got in battle. Here, things are bursting with life. New sown seeds await the warmth of spring. Today, in Huixian County, spring is everywhere. Its reconstructed hills and streams have a new look of special beauty. The work of 550,000 people of Huixian County has borne fruit. Barren hills have turned lush and green. Rough gullies and slopes are turned into fields and orchards. Irrigation is the lifeblood of agriculture. Since the Cultural Revolution, people here have gone all out to build water conservancy projects to solve the problem of frequent drought. Formerly, in the raining season, torrents used to rage down the mountains, while in the dry season, water was so scarce that it was as precious as oil. There is a place with a plentiful supply of water called the Hundred Springs. But before liberation, it was a scenic spot reserved for the aristocracy and the high officials. For thousands of years, the water here flowed away unused 
wasted. Meanwhile, the people of Huichen went thirsty and suffered from drought, cold, hunger, and exploitation. The disciples of Confucius and Mencius idled here in leisure and built this nest of pleasure with the sweat and blood of the working people. During the reign of Jia Qing in the Ming Dynasty, five sluice gates were built, but only officials could use the water. Common folk were forbidden to divert it for irrigation. This is what remains of one such sluice gate that went under the name of benevolence. It lays bare the essence of what the reactionaries mean by benevolence. When Lin Biao, that disciple of Confucius, mouthed benevolence, he was acting like his teacher, who sought to restore slavery under the slogan of restrain oneself and restore the right. That is what Lin Biao wanted, to retrogress and restore capitalism. Now, an electric pumping station runs the water of the hundred springs uphill for irrigation. Building socialism is unprecedented. The trend of history is irresistible. Before liberation, the Xinjing Yi Production Brigade had only a single well. People say it was built in the period of the Warring States, that is, around the 3rd century BC. An old peasant tells about its history. It was 72 meters deep and had three bands in its shaft. The bucket rope weighed more than 50 kilograms. Constant use cut two deep troughs into the stone at its mouth. When a bucket of water was finally drawn up, it was only half full, and they had to pay for using the well too. This well testifies to the untold suffering of the poor working people to the blood and tears they shed. During the great proletarian cultural revolution, the well was deepened and the shaft straightened. A pump was installed and the water channeled into a newly built reservoir. It is used to irrigate an area of 80 hectares through a system of canals and ditches. In 1973, the average yield of grain per hectare in Xijing Yu Brigade reached 4,800 kilograms, a six-fold increase over the 1965 yield of 690 kilograms. An old well has been rejuvenated through revolution. The contrast between the old and the new societies has aroused the masses to greater enthusiasm for building socialism. 36 members of Zhang Fei Cheng Brigade build this aqueduct high up in the mountains. Party Secretary Zheng Yonghe sum up the lessons in the work of the county. Before the Cultural Revolution, they worked on irrigation too, but there was no overall plan. And while they did draw a plan sometimes, they lacked a revolutionary approach. Now, they rely on the masses and go in for water conservancy in a big way. Through sweat and hard work, they have gained the initiative in the battle to transform nature.
Each commune and each brigade has its own irrigation project suited to its local conditions. Putting in more time on the project when the farm work allows. Some have special teams working on a full-time basis all the year round. The Lugu Brigade is building a reservoir that covers an area of more than 1.3 hectares. Reservoirs like this, which store up rainwater for irrigation use, now dot the county. The commune members dare to think and dare to act. They think up all sorts of ways to fight drought. The Jinjiang Brigade of Gaozhuang Commune dug a slanting shaft. A tractor is driven down the shaft to provide power for pumping water from six underground springs to a level dozens of meters high to irrigate the crops. This is the dry bed of the Huangshui River. The fields nearby were parched in summer, but suffered from waterlogging in autumn. The river water used to flow away through an underground core, wasted. This situation gravely hampered production and made it difficult to improve living conditions. The Cultural Revolution smashed the age-old fallacy that the highest are the wise and the lowest are the stupid. The masses and tatters of Huangshui Commune were determined to harness this underground river. They battled for eight months to build a dam 16 meters below the ground, more than 100 meters long. This forms an underground reservoir from which water is pumped to the surface through 550 meters of underground channels to irrigate more than 6,600 hectares of crops. In 1972, total yield of grain here was more than double that of 1965.
Huishen's water conservancy projects are characterized by self-reliance in buildings, wide variety of types, and full utilization of water resources. They exemplify the wisdom and strength of the masters. Chungtun Commune began sinking wells in 1970, but the supply of water was inadequate for channeling to fields far away. So they sank 12 wells and linked them up in order to pool the water. This involved digging 12 kilometers of ditches and building five aqueducts that total over 1,000 meters. Overjoyed, the people declaim, Bright shines the spirit of Dach Ai. Man's mind changes, so does the land. Through a net of channels and aqueducts, converging well waters flow at our command. This place used to be called the Eastern Wasteland. As the thing went, scarcely one out of three summers yielded enough wheat to make a meal. Starting from 1966, the people here built five pumping stations, one above the other, and two irrigation networks, one high and one low. It has since become a stable granary. One crop in 1972 gave up a hectare yield of more than 7,500 kilograms a 17-fold increase over the figure before the pumping stations were built. In eight years of hard struggle, the people of Huishen increased the area under irrigation from 24,000 hectares in 1965 to 42,700 hectares. They now have more than one fifteenth hectare of irrigated land per person. Learning from Da Jai, the people of this county are continuing to make revolution without let up. They plan to build four more reservoirs this year so as to ensure good harvest in spite of flood or drought. The mountains of Huishen have a heroic history. During the War of Liberation, four People's Army men fought a brave battle here, killing many enemy soldiers. When their ammunition ran out, they chose death rather than surrender and jumped into this deep pool. Now, the Shima Reservoir is to be built on this site where the martyrs died. Liu Shi Qing is a worker peasant soldier student just graduated from Tsinghua University. 
He is actively engaged in the struggle to change his native county. Zhang Mingxin, Deputy County Party Secretary, is a young cadre who emerged during the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution. He is director of the worksite and an ordinary fighter here as well. Hearing these explosions, the heroic people in the Taihang Mountains are inspired to bring into full play their revolutionary spirit. Hao Kuan, party secretary of Beidong Pro Production Brigade and wartime militia squad leader, is sending his youngest daughter to the construction site to learn to be a stonemason. Taking the iron-willed girls of Da Zhai as an example, the people of Huixian formed a group called the Stone Girl King. This was something new, and it had to develop amidst fierce class struggle. Some shook their heads and said, a sledgehammer is not a toy. How can you women use it? Stones are not so coy. You'll be injured or maimed if hit. Set on smashing old traditions and propping up half the sky, the Stone Girls team work with growing enthusiasm. teach them how to chisel. No one is born with knowledge, as Confucius claimed, but all must learn through practice. <laughs> Giving firm support to new things, Catters hold spikes for the girls. As their calluses grew thicker, the hill became lower. Under their hammer blows, Huixian County is changing with each passing day. Tomorrow, it will be even more beautiful. People of the Taihang Mountains must dare to fight rocks like the foolish old men of yore. This has become the common battle cry, feeling and determination of the 550,000 people of Huixian. <laughs> Communist Party member Xi Bai Qi holds not one but two spikes. rotten reactionary doctrines of Confucius and Mencius. The Shimen Reservoir Dam must be completed before the flood season. Cement is needed in large quantities.
workers in the Huishan cement factory do their bit to support their comrades in arms at the work site. People struggled day and night for so many deeds cry out to be done and always urgently. Office workers from the county party committee pull carts loaded with cement. Front and rear, sharing one aim, gives the work a big boost. Our People's Liberation Army men, who always adopt the people's most urgent tasks as their own, rush over to join the night battle. During the war of resistance against Japan, the army and people in the Taihang Mountains formed a revolutionary bastion which made the enemy panic at the mention of their name. Now they are fighting on a new battlefield, the battlefield of socialist construction. Working non-stop, they finish the dam ahead of schedule. The reservoir, when completed, will irrigate 4,000 hectares of land. Its hydropower station will have a capacity of 2,500 kilowatts. Wielding hammers and spikes like needles, the girls embroider their own design on the landscape. The Stone Girls team is competent at both manual and literary skills. The girls repudiate the reactionary concept that men are superior to women and blast it as an outmoded idea. Another brilliant example of what women can do. This is called the Red Women's Bridge because it was built mainly by women. 95 meters long, cleverly designed and very lovely too. It was completed in 1971. Women prop up half the sky. Their achievements boost our revolutionary morale. Besides working on water conservancy projects, the people of Huishan have also been building roads in the mountain areas. Communist Party member Shi Baoqing and his comrades are surveying the route of a future highway. He knows how indispensable good roads are for thoroughly transforming mountainous areas. The reactionary ruling class did build an imperial road through here, strictly for Manchu emperors to use on their sightseeing tours. For the poor people, however, it was hard going every step of the way, and danger was ever present. In 1935, the Kuomintang reactionaries used road building as a pretext to extort taxes from the people, but they only cut an opening in this ridge. During the war of resistance against Japan, the Japanese invaders also tried to build a road in the Taihang Mountains, but the people's resistance stopped them from doing it. The history of road making here shows vividly that roads in the old era were dead ends. Only the socialist road leads to a bright future. Shi Baoqing suffered a lot in the old society. 
After liberation, he went to school for two years and then did road maintenance work. Now he's become an expert in building roads. This proves that the theory of innate genius is utter nonsense. Genuine knowledge can only come from practice. Great proletarian cultural revolution, a special shock force of road builders was formed, consisting of over 200 people. Blazers in transforming Huixian County, they climb cliffs, cut through mountains, and dust tunnels. Fearing neither hardship nor death, they shed their sweat and blood to build roads leading to happiness for the people. Before 1965, the mountainous areas of Huixian County were inaccessible by car. The whole county had only 82 kilometers of motor roads. In the last eight years, they built 30 roads that total over 200 kilometers. This included digging 12 tunnels, cutting through nearly 100 hills, and filling up hundreds of ravines. The work done was more than five times the amount for the whole 17 years before the Cultural Revolution. Just when the people of Huixian were in the thick of battle against nature, the Limbia revisionist gang jump out to make trouble attempting to stop their onward march. The people of Huixian stood firm against this adverse current in the class struggle and the two-line struggle. They were not to be diverted from their work. The road is tortuous, but the future is bright. The people of Huixian are determined to follow Dajai's example and speed on towards socialism. They worked for six months and completed this 700 meter long friendship tunnel. They dug for two and a half years and finished this 800 meter long foolish old man's tunnel which bypassed 120 bends and released the people from the arduous task of carrying things on their shoulders or driving past donkeys. The people of Huixian worked hard for one year and ten months to complete this Xiangyang tunnel. It's 1,400 meters make it the longest road tunnel in China today. Mountains which obstructed the way for thousands of years have now been cut through. This is the foolish old man removing the mountains in its true sense. Only the foolish old man in this case it's not just one old man and his family, but the 550,000 heroic people of Huixian. The sounds of hammering echo deep in the Taihang Mountains. Narrow paths give place to thoroughfares. The more liberated the people's mind, the greater their revolutionary drive. The dry rivers and hills no one dared to touch have disappeared. Some have been harnessed 
some moved away. People are not only thinking about the incredible, they are actually doing it. In 1970, the people of Huishen, relying on their own strength and hard work, built a 50 kilometers railway. For the first time, old people are relieved of the mountain climbing and can travel in their own small train. The three hardships have been overcome. Water, so scarce before, is now plentiful. Moving about, which used to be hard, is easy today. And living improves all the time. the railway goes through a tunnel. This railway facilitates transportation for the county's industrial and agricultural goods. The people of Huixian worked hard for eight years to remove mountains, harness rivers, and build roads. As a result, they have improved material conditions. During a dry spell more severe than any in the last 50 years, the fields suffered no drought. The summer harvest alone reached the target set in the National Program for Agricultural Development, 3,000 kilograms per hectare. In 1970, agricultural output reached 3,000 kilograms per hectare. In 1972, after overcoming severe natural disasters, it exceeded 3,750 kilograms per hectare. The year witnessed a big increase in grain production. Total output was 1.5 times more than that before the Cultural Revolution. This leap placed Huixian County among the advanced counties of the Da Dai type. The Lin Biao Gang has slandered the revolutionary energy and drive of the people and conspired to stop their advance. But events have shown them wrong. The people of Huixian have done well in their all-out drive to build socialism. This year's struggle brought in a good harvest again. Our children must never forget how these fruits of struggle were won and must cherish them. Wan Zirong, head of the Wuli Tun production team, appreciates these achievements especially as painful memories bring back the past. She recalls the year 1942 when Huixian County was hit by a drought. 18 out of the 20 families in her village left home and went begging. Six children were sold. Three whole families died out. But in spite of this year's severe dry spill, the Wooly Tun production team is teeming with happiness and well-being. The line is the killing. Once it is grasped, everything falls into place. Success is but a new point of departure. New problems call for bigger strides. is never plain sailing. 
There is class struggle and a struggle between the two lines with each step forward. Huichen County still faces many difficulties in reshaping its mountains and rivers. The tasks are arduous and the road is long. Great and remitting efforts must be made to carry on our struggle. Revolutionary explosions shake the earth. The people of Huishen are struggling to surmount all their difficulties. They are continuing the revolution and carry on their all-out drive to build socialism. They are marching from victory to victory. The people of Huishen County have done well. They are forging ahead. <laughs> 